Oh man, here we go again. Representation does matter, especially when it's in the little ways most don't notice. Wow, way to trivialize the whole thing. I'm totally convinced. It's a powerful feeling to see a piece of media accurately reflecting your life and culture. Yes, but it's not a necessity or a moral obligation. It also for young kids sets the standard in their minds that they should expect to see themselves represented. No, hell no. You are setting these kids to utter disappointment. You are encouraging them to be dependent on fictional media to make themselves feel validated. It encourages narcissism and entitlement. Creating the idea in kids' heads that it should be normal to see their cultures in media and that they won't be relegated to being some exotic thing isn't narcissistic. Relegated to some exotic thing? Who does that? We have the internet now. Nothing is exotic anymore. No one thinks this way. If there are, they're not worth listening to. And it doesn't justify teaching children to be entitled and narcissistic towards fiction. You're trying to solve non-existent problems with a destructive solution. I hate when people straight up encourage narcissism and racism through this whole noble goal of representation. Do I love seeing Indonesians in big famous media? Hell yes. Joe Taslim is sub freaking zero. That's awesome. We Indonesians have truly made it, but you don't see us begging to Hollywood senpai and be like, please, Hollywood, have one of us there. Bro, this representation discourse is getting wilder and wilder. Representation matters. Miles Morales is lit and there's a whole generation of kids who relate to him. I like Miles. He's a good kid. I have no issues with him. What I'm saying is, I'm not white and even I can relate to Peter Parker. I highly doubt that you can. Stop speaking for all black and Hispanic people. Like what you're doing now? I don't relate to Goku at all. You don't relate to Goku, the most iconic shonen protagonist of all time, the childhood heroes of many kids around the world from all cultures that inspired many creators all around the world, and you don't relate to him? Are you a human being? Did you lose your empathy when you grow older? It's not surprising that the characters you relate to the most have the same skin color as you. This encourages racism. If a white guy says that they only relate to white characters, that's about as racist as this. You want to stop racism? Start having some empathy for people with a different skin color. But don't worry, we will continue to have people overemphasizing the importance of skin colors when it really shouldn't. These are the people that want to stop racism, by the way, and yet they continue to perpetuate racism. Remember that pointless Genshin boycott? Well, this person who learned game design attempted to explain the whole thing. I agree that Genshin depends on the character designs to sell the game, but you do realize that this goes against your point of diversity of skin color? Despite Genshin characters having much lighter skin tones compared to the global population, it is still a big money maker for Hoyo. That means the majority of Genshin players do not care about the skin colors of the characters. They care more about the overall design. Second, if Genshin wasn't made for representation, what is it made for? Money. Hoyo make Genshin to make money. They make a gacha game to extract money out of your wallets so you can get the next pull to get your favorite waifus or husbandos. Third, Hoyo is not racist just because they don't have a lot of non-white characters. The same way Boondocks is not racist for having majority black cast. Then again, none of it matters because most of you will be back playing the games anyway. And you already are. I mean, seriously, no one really cares about non-white Genshin characters, especially when Kaya has already filled the quota all by himself. I mean, there are female Genshin players out there, and girls like anime boys too. Speaking of anime and girls, here's a hoopla. Does anyone actually think this way these days? If girls are just pretending to like anime and Sailor Moon, Buran High School Host Club, Fruits Basket are considered girly anime, then who was watching them? All those are legit. Oran is one of my favorites of all time. My brother likes to read Shoujo and Jose. If you're a girl and you watch Shoujo or Jose anime, you're just as legitimate as any other anime viewers. If women are required to watch shonens to be seen as real anime nerds, then I think everyone should be required to watch at least two Shoujo series or one Jose series. Okay, back up a little bit. Women are not required to watch shonen to be seen as real anime nerds. Shonen is the most accessible genre for everyone, especially compared to shoujo or jose. I agree, those anime fans need to watch something else. Try Oran High School Host Club or My Love Story. I did watch Orange, which was fine. I also watched Maid Sama, and I really wish I didn't. Moving on from fake anime fans women, we have Passport Bros looking for Southeast Asian women. You Passport Bros never give up, do you? This Passport Bro is looking for beautiful women in Thailand or Philippines. The bro has a Tinder Passport and Bumble Passport, and the apps are the best way of finding romantic partners. <laughs> <laughs> no. Online dating is only as good as the people who are online. Trust me, the less online they are, the better. 
I want a gorgeous 8 or 9 out of 10 with good personality and college education. No Instagram personality women. Yeah, they're usually poor and live in remote villages. Average looking women are not my thing. Sorry to say this, bro, but most women are average looking everywhere, not just America. You'll be hard pressed to attract a top tier if we are talking 8.5910 unless you can also slay in your home country. <laughs> Facts. Think of it this way, Passport Bros. Most women here have standards. If you don't even have a game locally, you might as well give up here. But whatever your romance life is, hopefully it's not as bad as this. Let me tell you, this is some of the most cringe-inducing text logs I have ever read in my life. This is a conversation between a guy who desperately tries to win this woman. The guy is begging to this woman to get him back, but the woman just simply told him to end his life. That's not very nice. The conversation goes on and on. You can actually pause at whichever point you like and find a moment that makes you cringe. In fact, I will let this conversation play for a little bit so you can stomach the amount of begging that this guy tries to get the girl back. The longer this conversation goes, the sadder it is. You can even pause at some point and realize that this woman is fawning over a 17-year-old. Yes, the woman is infatuated by a 17-year-old. Dude, this woman is not worth all that text. She clearly doesn't want you anymore. Just move on to someone else, especially someone who is not a predator. Glad that you shared the whole thing so we can laugh at how pathetic you are. Moving on from stupid relationship hooplas, let's go back to pop culture, specifically movies. I'm not quite sure what this means. How it feels to only watch movies and shows with happy endings. Uh, most movies end in a happy ending. You guys want movies that end miserably? Most horror movies, but that's by design. Go watch The Villainous. It's an action movie that inspired John Wick Chapter 3, but it's hopeless and miserable. No incest, no glorified essay, no brutalization of women and minorities, and the animals live. Uh, this sounded extremely specific. What movie did you watch, old boy? That's the closest thing that fits. Go watch that movie if you haven't. Fantastic movie. Instead of good movies that just make me feel crappy and uncommon. Uncommon? How would someone feel uncommon? Yeah, there are movies that make me feel crappy and miserable that are not horror movies. Here's another one, SPL3 Paradox. That movie ended miserably, just like the first one, but not like the second one. They're all great though, go watch them. And since we're talking about movies that make you feel a certain way, let's talk about watching cosplayers that make you feel a certain way. According to this person, you're nasty if you watch Gargura or the adult cosplayers of Gargura. Why? Well, here's a crazy rambling of a psychotic terminally online lunatic. This person begins by saying that the cosplayer cosplays non-adult characters. Okay? And you would still be an adult. I don't find that disturbing at all. I want to know where you got this idea that supporting this leads to people committing real crime. I love how you say passively there because you're not even sure if what you're saying is real. And then you said that you're going to buy a ticket to fly and bludgeon the cosplayer to death. So a cosplayer passively encouraging crime by cosplaying is not okay, but murdering someone in real life is okay? Yeah, that's what 49 hours with no sleep will do to you. Also, are you seriously going to accuse someone that they are are fake better than others when you drew the line of cosplaying characters who are minor but perfectly fine with murder. Just saying. Speaking of Gura, you know how Gura is a VTuber and that there's a certain rule that you all must follow when creating a VTuber character? I didn't know that, but this person will let you know all about it. If you love VTubers, you might want to reconsider the ones with a certain physique. Because if the VTuber that you love to watch or the VTuber that you're roleplaying has a head that is like a couple of pixels too wide, that means your VTuber is a child and will bait child predators. I genuinely want to know what makes a person this terminally online to think that these two images make any difference whatsoever. However, but forget about all that, why are you using real children as a reference? Fiction is not real life, and VTuber characters are not trying to be real life. If you cannot separate drawings in real life, that's on you. I don't want to PDF bait. I want to be seen as a freaking adult. Okay, kid, there are lots of child predators online. How about you shut off the phone and get off the internet for your own safety? Where are your parents? Also, this kid was banned from Kofi for being under 18. Crazy. And that's all for the video today, thank you all so much for watching! If you made it to the end, here's a kitty for you! And also, huge thanks to all these wonderful sponsors, you are all fantastic! If you want to see your names among these legends, then check out the links down below, just one dollar! And you have supported this channel a lot, seriously, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time!